everyone, it's Julia. I am back with a video today. I want just wanted to play in my sewing room. It's just something I haven't done for so long. Just doing some experimenting with some of my art supplies on fabric. I'm using my jelly plate. That's the 12 by 14 inch. And I first of all put some fabric medium by golden on there. Now adding some color with ink tense blocks in various shades of blue. I am doing some blending right on my plate, just moving that color around. A piece of mus I'm using a piece of natural colored muslin. And I have a freezer paper that I, I have ironed on the back of this. A viewer actually recommended doing that. It, it helps keep the fabric a little stiffer so it's easier to turn it and move it around when you're jelly pl pl print, plate printing. I also squirted a little bit of water onto my muslin so it, it was damp. I'm doing the same process over here. Again, because my muslin piece was 13 by 19 inches and didn't completely um, cover, so I'm just doing the same process over to get more, more color onto that piece of muslin. Now, I, I'm wiping off my intense blocks, trying to get some of that fabric medium off of it. Probably not the best thing to be doing with my intense blocks, but I'm so happy that I was able just to use them. Sometimes they sit in my closet and they just sit there and I don't use them the way I should. Doing one more layer here and, I, and I'm wanting to do a stencil. And now I am putting those ink tense blocks just right on the plastic part of the stencil. And then taking a wet cloth and, and rubbing and or, or just getting that ink into the fibers. I thought this worked out really well. I really like the way ink tense looks on fabric because it's it's more transparent and you can see the layers underneath it. If I were to be using an acrylic paint, an acrylic paint is much more opaque and you, it'll be would just be a layer on top of layers and you wouldn't be able to see through them. I really re liked how this overall effect looked. Using the jelly Plate really adds color quickly to fabric. Doing my heat setting now, this the fabric medium does need to be heat set. And you can see a close up there. I love the variations and I love the, the um, just the white space too that it offers. Putting another layer, I'm using the Rain, Ranger Ar archival um, inks, ink pads, and then just some stamps that I have. These are more background stamps, just uh, placing them here and there. These archival inks are washable and permanent. Wonderful for fabric. Um, they are, they just work great. I'm going to have all my supplies listed down below so you can take a look. And another just random um, stamps. This is a script stamp and I'm, and I'm uh, this is a black ink that I'm using. This is not a perfect imprint and I don't want it to be. I'm just adding some detail to the background. And you can see a close up there. Now it's on to making the applique. I am using a very large star and I'm using um, heat and balm light. The back side I'm just drawing out my star. And now I'm labeling that star so I don't get confused to what's the tops and the, what's the bottoms and the sides. And I will be cutting this out. I've, I've chosen several different colors of pastels. I'm cutting this out and we'll be ironing each of these pieces on the back side of my fabrics. Now when you're using heat and bond light, you want to make sure you're using the light and not the heavy. The, the, your sewing machine doesn't like the heavy. It's harder to sew through. So I'm using the heat and bond light. And I, it, I didn't show that I, how I ironed it on, but it only takes a few 
few seconds to iron on, on this heat and bond light to the back side of your fabric. I'm removing that freezer paper now, and I do use this again as a um, uh, cover when I'm when I'm um, when I'm doing my ironing. So I just set that aside, removing those backings, and then laying these out. Now, and I, this star got a little bit too big, and I did end up trimming it a little, but once it was laying on this piece, um, but I did get it on there. And now it's to iron these. Yeah, here I am trimming. And but and then and then it's on to ironing these all down again to adhere those um, that heat and bond applique pieces right on top of this um, background that I made. I'm using my free motion um, stitching now. So my feed dogs are dropped. I'm using cream colored thread, and I have my free motion foot on. So I'm doing all the driving here. I'm doing all the motion. I'm drawing, I'm just going back and forth, meander stitching through each of these designs, and then edge stitching um, each one also. I go around more than once just to get a sketched on look, meander stitching all the way through in the background as well. Now I'm back and I wanted to write some words on top of this star. I'm using this friction pen by Pilot. Now these are not pens meant for fabric, but I did test these and it worked out fine, but you always want to test your products. Some people mention that they leave um, white stri strips on a darker fabric and sometimes they reoccur, the ink doesn't just completely disappear. So you always want to test it. Um, I've never had a problem with the muslin. I didn't like the way this turned out. So here I just took my iron and erased it. And that's what I love about using these on, on fabric. It's very forgiving. Um, I decided to do again the same words, only I didn't want it to be slanted as much. Just a word on, on um, writing and embracing your handwriting because it is a part of you. For years, I hated my handwriting. I'm left-handed and you can just tell when I write that I'm left-handed. But you know what? It's par a part of me and I've just accepted it. And I'm just becoming much more comfortable with writing and using my own handwriting. So anyway, I put believe in your wish. I just really like that and I thought it was fitting on this star. Back over to my sewing machine and I'm using a navy colored thread now. And again, just going around these letters. And I do get off a little bit, but this is really good practice. It, it makes you um, just that, that eye hand coordination it gets better and better as you, as you work with this. And now I'm erasing, getting all those um, pen marks off with my, with my iron. I wanted to add a bit more color to each of these appliques. And so I'm using my Inktense block. I have, um, I'm dipping my, my paintbrush in, uh, again, the fabric medium to activate that ink. And I'm using a scrubber brush, which is a, a short bristle brush that's real um, stiff and it's easy to work that ink right into the fabric. And now I'm back to my stamp stamping using the same stamps but I'm using the colors so that they match the fabrics. I'm using my orange ink pad and the orange block and yellow and the yellow and, and the vice and all and what you get you get it <laughs> the pink and the pink I love how this looks. It adds another, uh, just a playfulness to, to the fabrics. I'm using that freezer paper as a little cover here as I'm ironing. Once again, heat setting everything. 
And now it's on to making the corners so that this little wall hanging can hang with a dowel. I took a four inch square, folded it in half, and these will be pin, I'm pinning them on and will be stitched using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I want just a scant eighth of an inch because on this next step, I have um, the right sides together and I, I'm pinning the backing to the front here. The backing is just the same kind of natural colored muslin. And I will be leaving the bottom six inches open for turning. I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance so that um, those corners will be um, completely, um, that stitching line will, will not show, the original stitching line will not show. Turning it inside out and flipping those corners now to the back. And you can see how it just hangs with a dowel. This is an easy way to add a little hanger to your lightweight um, quilts. Now rolling everything and poking everything out, um, ironing everything flat. I will be taking this again to my sewing machine and using a quarter inch um, all the way around, just edge stitching it, and then the bottom will also be closed. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for joining me. Here's just a couple pictures of the finished project. I hope you have a chance to create today. Bye for now.